this month is actually year 17 that I've been teaching. So once I started teaching and saw the gift that it gave me, I said, our people have to have this because I love to share. So I said, we have to have it. So I've been teaching in the community for over 17 years. I teach from 2 to 92, and um, I, I just love it. It's a part of my life. Africa, and I started playing it and teaching myself ever since. So we'll um, have the first 11 minutes of our meditation with music and then go into the silence. So as we um, prepare to tune in with the sound of OM, we'll first embrace our higher selves and connect to those that have come before us and those that will go after us. So as we inhale a nice deep breath, let's stretch up. And as we stretch up, imagine we're grabbing all of our gifts and all of our life's purpose. And as we bring the palms together, we bring the palms to the center of the chest. And as we rest the palms at the center of the chest, that heart space where we want to come from, we bow our heads in reverence for this moment. As we rotate our head in a nice big circle, breathing in through the nostrils and breathing out through the nostrils. Breathing in through the nostrils and breathing out. What motivates me is that it helps me. It helps me to be in balance and I see the benefits from the community that I teach. It's a world practice. I've taught in Ghana before. They didn't speak English, but I'm pretty good at doing the movement so they can see it, but it really helps overall. People walk out smiling and hugging each other and just feeling like and that happens for me. Yoga is a lifestyle. That's what I encourage with my students for it to become a lifestyle. And even if they can't make class, I teach them one or two or three postures that they can do to be able to carry on. Because a lot of times, it's not sustainable. You, you may not be able to make it every week to class or I may be traveling. So how do you do your yoga and practice your yoga so it becomes part of what you do? And I tell people, you can get started, wake up, stretching in the morning. I do yoga everywhere I go. I've done it on the plane, on the train, on the boat, in a van, um, because the style of yoga, which is kundalini, is the breath more so than the postures. But I have managed to find spaces, even on the plane, to do yoga on my way to Japan. Yoga is from Africa. Our tradition is oral. So if you look at hieroglyphics and look at those postures, um, then you see the yoga. So it's in, it's in us. Anybody of any faith can practice because it takes you to that space of the heart being so open again, you begin to connect in a different way. Yoga is a way of life. You know, when you wake up, when you're in shower, you know, you raise your arm up, you stretch, you you know, get in your back and you use the towel and you, you dry off. So you begin to do it as you get dressed in the morning. So you make it a way of life. Um, when you're sitting, if you're sitting at a desk too long, you get up and you walk around. So I give little tips and techniques of how you can do that. I have a direct experience with my mom who had a major depressive episode. And I could see her being distant. And when she finished yoga, because what I say is just smile, mom, so you can bring those happy hormones to the frontal lobe of your brain and feel better. And at the end of class, she would feel better. So I witnessed that as a personal experience with, with my mom and others that have come. The question about being in physical health to do the training or even to do yoga, no. Because again, the style of yoga, which is kundalini, it deals with the breath. So I tell students, if you just come to the class and just breathe, then you're good. It's personal growth and development for you to internally, you know, look at yourself and how you can be your, your best potential. 
you don't have to necessarily be limited to do yoga because it depends on your range of motion. Everybody's different. Because some yoga postures, no matter how flexible you are, you may never be able to get into that posture. And that's the first thing people say is, oh, yoga is mm, or yoga is twisting and turning and contorting. But no, it's, it's not that. This style of yoga, there are styles that are like that. But that's why I love this style of yoga because it's a style that anybody can do. What is yoga? Yoga just means union. It means to join all of our systems, our digestive, our respiratory, our, our elimination system. And it's different from exercise because exercise, you may be working on just your muscles and your bones. With yoga, the postures that we did, you're moving, you're working on moving the, the circulation in the body. So you're working on all of your systems simultaneously. It helps overall emotional, mental, spiritual, and physical. All of those healths that come in. So it will bring you to being aware. So having a healthier diet, you have more stamina. Having a healthier diet, you're gonna be able to maintain and hold the postures and your body will respond. So it sort of gives you a barometer of where you are physically, emotionally, mentally, and then you can judge accordingly. Kundalini yoga is different from other yogas in that the asanas, the postures work on specific parts of the body. So what we did was awakening the 10 bodies. I mean, it's a set for the sciatic nerve. It's a set to work on strengthening the abs. It's a set to help cleanse your liver. So my classes are based on the theme and what season we're in. So we're in the fall, so we're gonna be working on the respiratory system. So you notice we did a lot of breathing and stretching and then we'll talk about the skin and what products you use because the skin and the lungs work together based on traditional Chinese medicine. Our lymph nodes are under our arms and between our legs and the lymph nodes produce lymphatic fluid and the only way that fluid is produced is through movement, through movement. Well, you know what? It's interesting that you bring that up because cotton, because it breathes, and I've just launched a line of yoga wear, and I'm wearing it called Yoga, Yoga on the Go, K-Yoga, for Kundalini Yoga, Yoga on the Go. And so my interest, because most of the clothing are spandex um, and form-fitting, where in, we have a lot of voluptuous women that come, and they want to be in things and not have tight spandex. So that will be my line. The, the first piece I have um, is the piece that I'm wearing. But we'll have many, many more, so I'm excited about that. And the idea is for this to be a movement, so not that you have to be just in a place to do yoga. Say if you're waiting somewhere, you can, you know, just stand up and do a yoga posture and do it wherever you are. Yeah, you know, we like to be stylish. I do. My nickname was Fancy Nancy, so I like to be stylish for whatever I do. <laughs> So I teach here in Lemert Park. I'm so grateful for the Visions Theater for James Burke allowing me to come and provide the service and Ursuline that comes on Saturday morning to open and Officer Short and allowing for us to have a beautiful space to do yoga. Visions Theater has so many programs and we'll have more when the theater opens. I do a lot of educating, a lot of teaching um, so people can make the decision and the choice for themselves about empowerment. All the programs I've ever worked have been about how do you become empowered to make that choice and not allow someone else to make that choice for you. Health is wealth. You can have all the degrees and all the money in the world, but if you don't have your health, then you have nothing. Your oxygen mask first and self-care, non-negotiable. Practice your Nahari, which is a Swahili word for self-care. Yeah.